Now we're going to get to linkage. Now in the case of linkage, the uh, different alleles of the different genes do not segregate independently from one another, and the reason they do not segregate independently of one another is they're stuck on the same chromosome. So they just can't do this sort of, you go this way, I go that way, or you go this way, I go that way, it doesn't make any difference. In this particular case, the way one allele segregates influences the way another allele segregates because they're stuck on the same chromosome. So let's just think of a case of two different um, uh, genes. One's called purple, one's called vestigial, and so what I'm showing here are uh, a true breeding stock with purple eyes, sort of more like blue, but let's call it purple for now, and vestigial wings. So this is a true breeding stock, and these are recessive alleles. So purple, purple, vestigial, vestigial, mutant, mutant. Now, in this particular case, you can cross this with the wild-type uh, uh, fruit fly. It's got normal wings. It's got the uh, wild-type allele of the sigil. You can indicate that with a plus if you were on the two. And um, purple, purple, wild-type alleles of both of those. You could also indicate those with a plus. Now, you were to suppose you were to cross these together, then, of course, you would get a uh, fly that looked wild-type as progeny because the... Uh, Plus the wild type alleles would cover up the uh, recessive alleles, so you would get this individual PR and uh, excuse me, purple and uh, vestigial, okay? And then you would then get the other chromosome inherited from this individual PR uh, and uh, mutant and vestigial mutant, okay? But this one individual would look wild type because these recessive alleles are covered up. Now you can do something called a test cross, okay? You can back cross to um, the uh, mutant line, for example, which is this uh, one in which it only has recessive alleles so that the mode of transmission is instantly revealed um, from the parents because whether the recessive allele basically um, reveals the allele that's inherited from, the, uh, from this back cross uh, parent. Okay, so this is an F1, and we're going to do a back cross, okay? Now, if there were independent segregation, what would be the expected genotypes? Well, you would expect, um, for example, we know that the uh, genotype inherited from this individual is going to be a uh, little PR, a little VG. Okay, so you can, this, okay, it's definitely going to be that. Now, what are the possible um, allelic assortments that can be inherited from this? Now, if they're segregating independently, you could transmit this and this. Okay, but equally as frequently you would transmit this and this if they were unlinked, if they're on different chromosomes, but they're on the same chromosome, we'll see what that means. Likewise, you can then transmit this and this, and this and this, equally as well if they were unlinked. And so there's four different possible gametes that this individual can produce, and under independent segregation, each of those gametes is equally likely. So there's four possible gametes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the four possible gametes united with the known gamete from here. So this individual, I'll make this one black because it's just a consistent. So little PR, vestigial, purple, vestigial, okay, and purple, vestigial. These are the four types of chromosomes that the four types of gametes will experience when crossed backward to that. And so you would get, for example, um, like this kind, okay, and then you could also get, for example, this kind, and then you can also get, if under independent segregation, this would be as equally as common, okay, and under independent segregation, the this one would be as equally as common. Okay, so what are the phenotypes that G types indicate? So this would be wild types, so red eyes, normal wings, this individual would be mutant for both, so purple eyes, vestigial wings. This individual would have normal eyes, wild type eyes, but have vestigial wings because it's their sets of alleles of both of those. And then reciprocally, this one would have purple eyes and vestigial wings. Now under independent segregation, each of these would equally, be equally likely, and so we get the famous sort of one to one to one to one segregation pattern. Now this is not actually going to be the case, we're going to say, for in this particular case, that they're linked, and they're linked in such a way that between them, okay, there are 10 centimorgans. And by 10 centimorgans, what I mean this is a 10% recombination frequency, or 
0.10 recombination frequency or 10% chance of recombination, okay? So if you were to collect a thousand progeny from this particular class, what would you expect, okay? Well, 10% of them would be of the recombinant class, okay? These are the uh, recombinants, okay? And then uh, the residual, the other 90% would be of the parental class, parental. Okay, so of a, pro a thousand progeny, 100 would be of this kind, and 900 would be of this kind, okay? And you then would partition accordingly, equally, between those 50 and 50 here, this is what's expected, and uh, 450 and 450 here. Now, of course, this is the expectation, of course, there's going to be variation there, so, you know, your real data might be something like, you know, 462 here, Okay, um, 438 here, and 55 here, and 42 here, something like that. Okay, that would be what real data would look like. But this basically shows you that there's this 10% recombination because the recombinant class is 10%. Of the, time. the next module we're going to do is tell you what happens in meiosis in this particular case.